We're going to start talking about acids and bases and hopefully the videos that you watched on Thursday will give you an idea that what you've already learned at some point during your schooling is um, not quite as detailed as what's true about acids and bases. So there are several definitions of acids and bases that we'll discuss. And actually, they're all used currently to a point. And so we'll have to kind of uh, work those through the, some of those. We're going to start talking about just general properties of acids and bases. Oops, sorry about that. So, let's see. Acids. So they're typically sour. So if you think about, you know, the, Lemons are very acidic and they are obviously extremely sour. The, the term for sour is this Latin term acidus. So that's how we ended up, that's why it's named those, these types of chemicals are named acids. Now, they, these acids, um, and bases too, but these acids, since we're gonna start with those, are electrolytes and they behave in many ways like salts. So if, when you put them in water, so if you put sodium chloride in water, you remember that it ionizes into sodium ions and chloride ions. Okay, well, hydrochloric acid, HCl, is also going to ionize in water and it's gonna break apart into its ions, H3 plus and Cl minus. Okay. <clears throat> when we use a pH indicator, litmus, litmus is a very prominent acid-base indicator. And we can use regular paper and put litmus on it, and then it becomes a gauge of whether a substance is an acid or base. So uh, acids turn litmus paper uh, Litmus, red, pink to red. Okay. Another thing to keep in mind is that acids, like HCl is an acid, will react with a metal and it will produce, those reactions will produce hydrogen gas. Now, this metal, and it could be a different acid, it could also be a different metal. It could be sodium, it could be calcium, it doesn't matter. But in, in, in water, they're going to react and they are going to form magnesium ions and chloride ions and hydrogen gas. Okay. And if this magnesium ion and this chloride ion, if those were to be, um, you know, to go back into its ionic compound formula would be MgCl2, magnesium chloride. But since it's all in water, all of those ions have associated and you end up also producing hydrogen gas. Now let's talk briefly about bases. They have a bitter taste and they feel slippery. So if you think about the way soap feels, soap is a base. So that's what we mean when we say slippery. It's um, feel, it got a little bit of a film and it feels just kind of slidy and slippery in your hands. When you use litmus paper and you test a substance and it turns paper blue, then that means you're dealing with the base. And then some of these bases are also electrolytes, meaning they dissociate in water and form <clears throat> ions with charges in water. Now, sometimes, hang on just a second, let me move this down. You can have a neutralization reaction. And what that means is you can take an acid and a base. And look what happens. You get a salt in ACL and water. So if you <clears throat> let hydrogen chloride react with sodium hydroxide, you can see this hydrogen and this OH form water, and then you have a metal forming a compound with the nonmetal. And then we're going to spend a few minutes
looking at a, a definition or two of acids and bases. Now, we can look at some, the, the model called the Arrhenius model. In the Arrhenius model, the, this definition is where you, an, um, the acids ionize to release hydrogen ions into water. So anything that would have an H out in front and would dissociates would release hydrogen ions into water and that would be considered an acid. And an Arrhenius base would release hydroxide ions into water. So Arrhenius acid releases hydrogen ions, Arrhenius base releases hydroxide ions. Problem is, um, it's, th those are kind of limiting, um, limiting definitions. And you can't always tell if something is an acid or base by whether or not it has a hydrogen or an OH group with it. So some examples, here you've got CH4, which is methane. Methane does not act like an acid, even though it has four hydrogen, compound, um, four hydrogen atoms with it. And likewise, this is methanol. Well, this OH group does not act like a base, and it does not get hydroxide ions do not get released if you were to dissolve methanol in water. So this is a very incomplete, it's sometimes effective and it sometimes works, but it does not run the gamut as far as um, all the acids and bases that exist. And it's kind of misleading as well, because like we said, Methane, even though it has, looks like it would have hydrogen ions, it does not. They do not get released in water, and methanol does not release OH in water. Um, so this is just reiterating what I said. The Arrhenius model is limited because it only deals with compounds and aqueous solutions, and some acids and bases don't follow those H and OH rules. All right, so we had to go to a different, broader, more, can, um, encompassing definition. And that was with the Bronsted-Lowry model. And these two guys were working on this together at the same, kind of at the same time. And so they shifted the definition. And instead of releasing a hydrogen ion, an acid is a substance that releases a proton. And a Bronsted-Lowry base is a substance that accepts a proton. So it's, we're not dealing with H plus and OH minus anymore. We're dealing with proton donors, acids, proton acceptors, which are bases. And there are two terms for this. Deprotonation is when you lose a proton, and protonation is when you gain a proton. So when we talk about acids in the Arrhenius model as compared to the Bronsted-Lowry, they have some things in common. Um, but the bases are quite a bit different. And then we need to talk about this idea of conjugate pairs. So for every base, there's a conjugate acid, and for every acid, there's a conjugate base. Now, what we haven't mentioned yet, but it's gonna keep coming up, is that certain acids and bases, when you dissolve them in water, if they're what we're going into more of a categorical um, strong acid, strong base conversation later. But if you have very strong acid, it's going to completely dissociate in water and you'll have like hydrogen chloride, HCl. It'll be an H plus ion and a Cl minus ion. Um, but in it, but sometimes, and, and there the equilib there's not much of an equilibrium process. They, there is a little bit of back and forth, meaning you, you make the H plus and the Cl minus and it shifts back. But there are certain acids bases where there actually is much more of a give and take. And so, when we talk about acid-base reactions, we have to talk about them in terms of equilibrium. So that's why we cover the, one of the reasons why we covered equilibrium in the last chapter, because we can't really have a good conversation about acids and bases until you have some understanding of chemical equilibrium. So let's look at this reaction here and let's talk about the idea of conjugate acids and conjugate bases. So keeping to the idea of an acid is a proton donor, and a base is a proton acceptor. So let's look at this reaction, proton 
donor, proton acceptor, keeping that in mind. So this acid is acetic acid. That's um, a real, a kind of a weaker acid. And we're gonna dissolve it in water. Now here's what happens. Now look why I said acid and base. Well, here's why. Look at the products over here. Okay. What, how did water change? Look, it gained a proton. Now this right here is called a hydronium ion, okay? So water that has gained a proton is a hydronium ion. Now, look what happened to acid, uh, acetic acid. It lost a proton. It was, so acetic acid was a proton donor. Acetic acid donated a proton to water, and water accepted the proton, so it actually acts as a base. Is that kind of weird? So acetic acid, proton donor, donates it to ba the base, which is actually water, and water accepts it. Now, we can look at the reverse reaction too and see why we're calling, so if, if, acetic, a if acetic acid is the acid over here, why is the acetate the conjugate base? So in, a, in an equilibrium reaction with acids and bases, you'll have the acid, and you'll have a conjugate base pair, and you'll have a base with a conjugate acid pair. Now, look at the difference. So why would you call this the conjugate base? Well, what, look what happens in the reverse reaction. In the reverse reaction, you take the acetate ion, and it is going to accept this extra proton from the hydronium ion. So it acts as a proton acceptor to go back and form acetic acid. Likewise, the hydronium ion is gonna act as the conjugate acid because it is going to donate its extra proton. And it's gonna be the proton donor, which is the acid. And it will reform to water if you're going, looking at the reverse reaction. And the last major model that we'll talk about is the Lewis model. And it goes back to those idea of Lewis structures. And what you're looking at, you know how Lewis structures, and when you would draw the structures, you would count up electrons, and you'd see if there were any unshared pairs of electrons, and that would affect the geometric, ge geometric shape. So the Lewis model, if you take the definitions of acids and bases, the Lewis model, or a Lewis acid, is any substance that can accept a pair of electrons and a Lewis base will donate a pair of electrons. And this is much broader than any of the other two models. So if you look at this circular modeling here, the Arrhenius theory is a much tighter definition than the Brosted-Lowry theory, which is a little bit of a tighter definition than the Lewis theory. So Lewis is the broadest and encompasses the most. Brosted-Lowry is kind of the one in the middle and the Arrhenius is the most specific and it lim it's the most limiting definition. So let's talk, look at this real quick. If we look, um, we're gonna look at ammonia and water. So here, we have a, an unshared pair of electrons. All right, now what did we say? Which of these, ammonia or water, is gonna act as our acid? And I know it's weird to think about water as an acid or base, but in chemical reaction, it can act like one even though it's a neutral substance on the pH scale. And we're gonna talk about the pH scale later, okay? So let's go back to our definition. A Lewis acid is any substance that accepts a pair of electrons. <clears throat> a Lewis base can donate a pair. So this pair of electrons is gonna get donated, okay? So ammonia here is acting as the base where water is acting as the acid. Okay. And if you look, there's, this is also explained pretty well. Let me find the page in your textbook. This concept is also explained on page 412. And you can, it's the, base, it's the exact same diagram. You'll see that ammonia, is acting as the Lewis base because it can donate a pair of electrons in the formation 
of a covalent bond. And this is where you get that covalent bond here. Okay. So go back and review these three definitions and there are going to be some review questions for you to do that as well. So we have the three definitions, Arrhenius, Bronsted-Lowry, and Lewis. Okay, so the Arrhenius is the tightest, and what that says is uh, an acid donates hydrogen ions and a base donates hydroxide ions. That limits what can be considered an acid and base. It's a very tight, tight group of chemicals that would be considered acids and bases. Bronsted-Lowry, proton donors, protons acceptors. The Lewis model, electron donors, electron acceptors. So go back and review those. You'll have some questions to do to accompany this lesson and hopefully help uh, drill that bit of information home. Hope you guys have a great day.